My name is Stephen Kane. I'm a professor at San Francisco State University and I'm answering questions for Instant Expert. I started working on exoplanets when the whole field really started to um, uh, grow uh, at a dramatic rate and that was around about 1995. And the reason that it grew at that particular time was because that was when we first discovered a planet around a solar type star, a star like our sun. Uh, that was a, a planet orbiting a star called 51 Pegasi in the constellation of Pegasus. And that started a whole revolution of a new wave uh, of finding exoplanets. And since then, we've been finding them at a dramatically increasing rate, and, uh, and we've been finding smaller and smaller planets. Uh, myself and, uh, and a team of other astronomers announced a new discovery, very exciting discovery, of a planet called Kepler-186f. Uh, the reason it's called that is because uh, it was discovered by the Kepler spacecraft, and then it gets this catalog number which comes after that. But the significant thing about this particular planet is that it's only slightly larger than the Earth, and it's in the habitable zone of its star, which means it's in this region where it could feasibly have liquid water on the surface. So this was a real milestone for astronomy, but a real milestone for civilization as well, because now we're living in this age where we have the capability to detect planets like the Earth. So that happened in April, and when I announced that, I spoke to the press and I spoke to the public as much as I could about it. And uh, one of the folks at Firaxis saw my uh, one of my interviews on uh, BBC, and uh, when they saw that, it just so happened that the folks at Firaxis were developing uh, the uh, maps that they were going to release with civilization beyond Earth because they wanted to have all kinds of planets. But the interesting thing now is now we can put in planets that actually exist. We don't have to necessarily randomly generate uh, a planet. We can say, well, this planet is, is real, so let's put that into the game. It's real... Uh, uh, inspiring and and uh, allows players to to relate to it on a much deeper level because they can go and look up information about this planet that they're building a civilization on and so they contacted me and said can we put th this planet in the game and I said sure and then as we spoke more and more I started to tell them more about other kinds of planets which they could use in their game and the relationship has just gone on forward from there it's been very exciting the maps that Fraxis is producing for the surfaces of these planets, it's using real data that we have, but then we can say something like, oh, if the planet is slightly further away from the star, maybe it's an icy planet, or if it's close to the star, maybe it's a desert planet. Or in, in some cases, they did something very clever with one of the uh, uh, new map packs which will be coming out, and that is have a planet, a, a real planet, which is close enough to the star that it's tidally locked, meaning the same side of the planet is always facing the star so in that case it's desert on one side and it's cold on the other so it's using real data and real information and then making an educated guess about what's actually going on at the surface we all enjoy uh, laughing at the old science fiction films which have everybody in silver jumpsuits and yet we equally make the same kinds of predictions about the future speaking specifically for civilization beyond earth I think that is actually a very realistic scenario for the future. Uh, and I'm basing that on several things. Uh, one is that um, uh, we as a civilization on this planet uh, have progressed a long way, but we've shown that historically that we're not always necessarily good for the planet. We're not necessarily good for each other. And so it's very easy to imagine a situation in the not too distant future where we have to leave because we have messed up or th there's something which has happened. An environmental disaster is of course something which is on everybody's minds now. So 200 years in the future, that's a very, very plausible future out of all kinds of possible futures. Now in terms of what we do next, which is the premise of the game, which is to leave and go somewhere else, how plausible is that? And the answer to that is, that's also very plausible because we've, we're now at this point where we can find these 
Earth-sized planets. And we know that uh, almost every star have these planets. And so 200 years from now, given how technology and discoveries have advanced over the past two decades, 200 years from now, I expect that we'll have uh, hundreds of thousands of planets to choose from where we can say, okay, that place is okay, let's go there. And, uh, and that creates a, a, a world where even though we've messed up here, we've still got plenty of other places to go, which is of course much more optimistic than the alternative of having nowhere else to go. The great thing about, about this relationship that, uh, that Firaxis and 2K and I have is that, and I hate to use this buzzword because a lot of people hate it, but it is a perfect synergy uh, because of this particular place that we're at, where we can now start to uh, replace all these made up worlds. I mean, for, for over a hundred years, science fiction writers have been working under the assumption that there's other planets out there. And when you watch old episodes of Star Trek or whatever, they could just go to these random places and, uh, and land. And of course they can breathe the air and it's, it's gravity, but, but we know that, uh, that these places are out there now. And so instead we can start using these in science fiction and in these games and uh and it really inspires people imagination when you're talking about a real place this place is real it's up there in the sky and one day we will go there i think that's ultimately a good thing because the more you expose people to actual discoveries that are taking place the more it will increase their interest in science and i think that's something which is sorely needed right now